welcome students to the today's lecture today we will be talking about a very interesting test that we routinely performed in the immunological laboratories that is ohms test the main learning objective of this lecture is we will be getting to understand the what is the basic principle of this test what are the alternative names why we need to use it what is the significance its importance in our daily life and what are the different type of tests that we can basically uh, you know go on performing for detecting various kinds of diseases so that is the main thing and at the end of this lecture you will be imparted with lot of knowledge uh, regarding the significance of this test that we normally carry out in our laboratories so starting with its brief introduction this ohms test that is also called it call it as anti globulin test however uh, this was named after the name of scientist who discovered it ohms morant and brace it this test was discovered in the year 1945 however this test is basically dependent upon analyzing the presence of antibodies that coat the red blood cells and because of that coating red blood cells die too early before their life span is complete now we all are very well aware of this fact that antibodies are basically are uh, you know soldiers of our uh, uh, you can say the weapons uh, that uh, our soldiers possess that basically produce in response to certain kind of infections so as to cater the infection however what happens is sometimes these antibodies they uh, happen to make a mistake that means they start attacking our healthy cells they starts starts attacking the host body cells in that case certain uh, medical conditions may arise for detection of those antibodies and for the confirmation of those particular diseases this test is being performed because it is basically dependent upon the presence of antibodies however the reagent what we use in performing this test this ohms test or you can say anti globulin test that is known as ohms reagent now what is that ohms reagent actually basically it is a ahg serum that is anti human globulin serum as the name suggests this test is anti globulin test so the serum is also anti human globulin serum and how we can prepare it what happens is we take the human globulin and we inject those human globulin into animals now when you will be injecting a foreign material into a different organism that organism will recognize that very molecule as foreign and it will start producing antibodies so the main objective is to inject the human globulin into animals when those animals will start producing antibodies specific to that globulin in that case those specific anti human globulin body you form for the detection of various malfunctions that are happening next is now uh, how we can go for the detection what is the test is all about this anti globulin test we can go for detection rbc cells that are sensitized with igg lo antibodies or auto antibodies or some complement components that means auto antibodies means those kind of antibodies that are produced against our own cells that means igg antibody would be coating the rbc cells or you can say the rbc would be sensitized with the igg antibody so the sensitization process it sometimes may happen under in vivo conditions and sometimes under in vitro conditions so depending upon that two different techniques are being used in two different stages one is indirect and other is direct now whenever we use anti human globulin serum to detect the sensitization or to detect the coating cells under the in vitro condition in that case it is known as indirect anti globulin test we would be saying it as anti globulin test
so the basic concept is this anti human global and test is uh, you know basically used to detect sensitized our red rbcs the our uh, uh, rbc cells that are coated with igg allo antibodies or auto antibodies and this thing can happen in two different phases that is in in vivo condition and in in vitro condition when this thing is happening under in vitro condition that means when we use anti human global and serum under the in vitro condition to detect the presence of a particular antibody coated with the uh, coating the rbc that is known as indirect anti global and test and when you when never the sensitization of red cells is happening under the in vivo condition and in that case it is known as direct anti global and test now what is the principle about it now the main principle is it is dependent upon some incomplete antibodies that basically attached to the surface of rbc by the fab portion we already know that the an antibody it is basically consisting of two parts if it is y shaped then this portion variable region this is known as fab region and the uh, lower portion the stem portion that is known as fc region now these antibodies basically attached to the membrane by fab portion and these igg molecules that are attached to the antibodies that means uh, each and every immunoglobulin igg is attaching or it is coating the single single rbc but the clumping is not happening because the gap is not bridged between two rbc suppose this is suppose this is one rbc this is second rbc the antibodies are attached to the surface here also and in the case of here also so in that case no doubt the surface of this rbc is also coated and the surface of this rbc is also coated but the point is the gap is left between both the rbcs if this gap is to be bridged in that case the if this gap is bridged only then the rbc will be agglutinating or precipitating due to which some medical condition will arise so the point is what is this cohn serum and how we can go for the detection that whether you know some antibodies are present or not as you can see in this picture also so these are different rbc cells this is first second and this one is third now as you can see these blue uh, antibodies they are attached to this rbc by the fab portion and these green antibodies are basically bridging the gap so as to connect these rbc so that the clumping may happen so these antibodies are basically arising from the ahg serum that we use in the coom stain test that is known as coom serum coom reagent or ahg serum. now whenever you take a serum from a rabbit or any other animal that has been previously immunized with some purified human globulin to prepare these antibodies against igg and complement to these we can use these serum both in the case of direct as well as indirect test and it is known as anti human globulin that is why the name of this test is also known as anti globulin test now this is the uh, basically diagram there are two diagrams as you can see this is one and this is two here in case this is the diagram in which incomplete agglutination is being shown as you can see this is the rbc surface this is the first rbc this is the second rbc here you can see these igg antibodies are attached with the help of fab portion here it is also attached and you can see here it is also attached but the gap is left this is the incomplete agglutination no doubt the rbc surface is coated with the igg but it is not showing any symptom because the or if you can say it is not showing any clumping in that case in order to detect that whether the rbcs are coated with these antibodies or not we go on performing the coombs test in which when we add an ahg serum that is coombs serum these green antibodies it will attach to the fc portion as you can see fc portion of both these igg antibodies which are attached to rbc are further attached by this antibody by the fab portion this is the fab portion so when this is happening a gap is the bridge between them the gap that was there that is basically bridged due to which the agglutination would be happening 
So when you will be adding an AAG serum, and and you will you know add that thing to the sensitized post cells, the fab portion of these anti-human globulin serum molecules. It reacts with the Fc portion of two adjacent IgG molecules that are attached to the red blood cells, thereby bridging the gap between these red red uh, uh, blood cells and giving cause the A glucose. So, uh, depending upon this, the test becomes complete. But how we can go for the you know basically uh, uh, for the detection of different kind of conditions? So, this is a complete reaction, as you can see. Where in the previous slide, what we were seeing, we were seeing only this portion, that these are the two RBCs and the gap is bridged. Now, how this gap will basically bridging of gap will help in the you know agglutination because as you can see, the green antibodies are here attached. It is also attached to this antibody. It is also bridging the gap between these two and RBCs also. So thereby a complete network would be completed or complete lattice would be formed due to which the agglutination would be happening. So uh, suppose you want to go on testing uh, for uh, the detection of a particular kind of uh, autoantibody that is coating the RBC. In that case, what you have to do? First step, you have to take out the blood. This is the first step. Transfer that to a vial. In that case, the RBCs, if it is coated with IgG antibodies, then you need to add an AHG serum. A H G serum that is anti-human globulin serum into it, due to which these antibodies will bridge the gap and this type of appearance because of the clumping of RBC will be observed. And this will showing a this will show this will prove that a Coombs reaction has been performed successfully. Now the point is how and why to prepare this test. However, we do not require any special kind of preparations for it. We normally test this thing in some case of infants and young children. So, taking down this test by depending upon the child's age, what for the previous experience and the level of trust depending upon the parents. Now the point is why we need to perform this test. Uh, most commonly we use indirect wounds test. That is basically used to predict circulating antibodies that against RBCs. The major use of this test is to determine if the patient has antibodies in the blood that is capable of attaching to the RBC. That means they are free. They are com co continuously circulating in the uh, blood. These antibodies are not those antibodies that are targeted towards the particular type of blood group. For example, ABO blood group or RH type. The point is, this is basically used to detect the presence of RH negative antibodies or some other antibodies in the patient serum in case of the few cases. For example, if you want to check whether a RH negative woman who is married to a RH positive man, whether it has developed some anti-RH antibodies or anti-D may be produced in the blood of any RH negative person by the exposure to D antigen. Because sometimes what happens if your blood group is not matching and, you know, uh, RH positive uh, blood is being transfused into inside the RH negative person. In that case, antibodies develop against that RH vector. That thing may happen in case of some transfusion reaction, transfusion of RH positive blood. Or in case of pregnancy, if the fetus is RH positive because the father is RH positive but the mother is RH negative. Or you can say the abortion of an RH positive fetus also. So what is this indirect anti-globulin test actually? This is the test. What is happening? What is happening? In which the serum with specific antibody is mixed with the reagent red blood cell. This is the RBC. And these are the specific antibodies. Now, first of all, you need to incubate this thing. After that, wash it so that the unbound antibodies are released. Then unbound globulins are renewed removed when it is removed then we will be adding our AHG serum when you will be adding the AHG serum what it would be doing it would be basically bridging the gap between these because of that clumping would be uh, agglutination would be observed this is the complete uh, complete laboratory based steps that how we go on performing this suppose this is the serum or plasma containing different type of antibodies now uh, for the screening of the cells, first of all, you need to incubate these cells at 37 degrees Celsius with the RBCs, with the particular antiserum. After that, wash it three times, followed by centrifugation. 
after that what you have got only the bound antibodies that are uh, antibodies that can bound to the surface of rbcs they are you know remain attached to the rbc after that you need to add ahg serum when you will be writing the ahg serum it will bridge the gap and clumping of this type would be possible under the uh, light suits now how you can go on performing the test what are the requirements that the flow chart i have just shown you need some test tube pasteur pipettes incubator and centrifuge you need for the specimen you need a serum that need not be in the fasting condition reagents what you use you need an anti human serum and anti d serum additional requirements in case uh, uh, that case for the control wells you need a make a pooled o rh rh positive cells from at least three different o positive blood samples these samples should be washed three times with the normal saline so as to you know ensure that there are no free antibodies procedure you have to label you have to take three test tubes and label them as test positive control and negative control now the point is whenever you are going to perform any kind of laboratory based test in that case we need to have two controls one is positive one is negative positive stands stands for it will show the result what we want that if the test should be positive in that case what shall be the result and if the result it shall be negative that means if the disease is not present or antigen is not present in that case a negative result is there so the depending upon that we will be taking two uh, controls positive and negative in the tube which was labeled as test we will be adding two drops of anti d serum then in the tube labeled as positive control we will add drop of saline and in the uh, uh, five drop add one drop of five prime saline suspension of the pooled o rh positive cells in the each test tube and incubate all these test tubes at 37 degrees celsius after that wash them three times with the normal saline so that unbound antibodies free antibodies they can be removed however after that add two drops of foam serum that is anti globulin serum in each of the tube and incubate that tubes for 5 minutes and after centrifugation at 1500 rpm for 1 minute you can be suspend the cell and you can examine those cells under the microscope in that case if these results are coming you can interpret depending upon the observation how you can go for the interpretation as you can see in the case of positive control if the agglutination is happening that means you have performed the test correctly that means whatever the result that could be coming in the test that is sure shot result if in case agglutination is not happening in that case foam serum may not be proper or some handling problem is there in that case you need to repeat the test because in the positive control agglutination must happen to ensure that we have performed the test correctly negative control in case of negative control it will show no glutination because negative as the name suggests it shall be negative there shall be no glutination because we have added saline in it and saline doesn't contain any antibodies so in the case of test if a glutination is there along with if positive control is also shown a glutination then the patient serum contain anti d and if no agglutination is there that means the patient serum does not contain ntd and there are no reaction no presence of auto antibodies this is the complete chart as you can say this is the recipient serum for example the serum that you have taken from the patient containing the antibodies these are the antibodies that are pre present in the serum these are the rbcs we would be adding these thing with the donor's blood sample we will be incubating it after that if these antibodies are able to coat the surface it will coat as you can see now it has coated and coated the surface and these complexes has been formed after that you need to add ahg serum now this ahg serum will uh, cause the agglutination of these red blood cells because it is already attached to the uh, uh, you can say red blood cells and because of that you will be finding a positive foam result now uh, uh, having talked about indirect foam test this thing is direct foam test we also call it as direct anti globulin test basically we perform this test if you want to detect anti d antibody or any other kind of antibody that is attached to the cell surface within the blood stream this thing is basically uh, you know uh, performed in for a few circumstances 
For example, if a Rh positive fetus or Rh positive baby is present in the womb of a sensitized Rh negative monogamy, that is what happens. If the antibodies from the placenta of the mother is passing to the fetus, that is to IgG. So those antibodies produced in the mother serum will cross the placenta and it will enter the baby's bloodstream and these antibodies will attach to the RBCs of the baby. Rh positive blood cells and these coated cells are uh, you know clumped and removed from the circulation and because of that the baby is born with a disease known as hemolytic anemia or hemolytic disease of the new newborn or erythroblastosis uh, fetalis we call it. So when the baby is born in that case the baby's blood from the umbilical cord or you can say the blood is collected and it is te tested for the anti-globulin Coombs test to detect anti-D antibodies whether it is coating or not. Because in the further reactions, it may cause serious complications. For example, in case of transfusion reaction, in case of drug-induced red cell sensitization, or in case of autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Because this is the reaction, because this complete thing is happening under in vivo condition. These are the cells that are coated in in vivo condition. Now take those, uh, if you suppose after the birth of the dead, you have taken the blood from the umbilical cord. If the RBCs are already coated, what you would be doing? Would be taking the RBC, washing, uh, giving a wash for one time so as to remove unbound globulin. Then you will be adding the comb serum. If the antibodies are coating the RBC, the, it will uh, you know, bring about the agglutination. From there, you can detect yes, the uh, baby is suffering from hemolytic anemia. Now, this is basically this test that we also call it as it. Detect sensitized red blood cells with IgG or complement components that is C3B and C3D. In vivo coating of these red blood cells with IgG or complement, it may happen due to the certain immune mechanisms or, uh, you know, attacking patient's own RBC. And because of these mechanisms, some various serious conditions may arise and that condition is known as autoimmunity. And uh, autoimmunity or L immunity or, you know, drug-induced autoimmune mechanisms also. These are the reaction uh, you, uh, the main requirements and procedure. You need test tube, pasture pipette, incubator, and centrifuge. Again, the specimen we need blood that is drawn into EDTA uh, because uh, uh, preferred, but sometimes clotted or situated blood may be used. In that case, first of all, 5% suspension of isotonic saline of red blood cells to be tested. You have to take that with clean pasture pipette. You can take the cell suspension into small tubes, wash three times with the normal saline. So that all the traces, all the impurities of the serum are removed. After that, we can the completely after the last washing, add two drops of anti-human serum, mix well and centrifuge at 1500 RPM for one minute. After that, we suspend the cell by gentle agitation and examine those cells under the microscope for agglutination. So this is the mechanism of it. As you can see, this is the first step. First of all, you need to take the blood. This blood is taken. This blood samples may be from a patient with, you know, uh, hemolytic anemia. In that case, if the person is suffering from hemolytic anemia under the in vivo condition, in that case, the blood cells, RBCs would be coated with these antibodies. After that, if you will directly add this serum, it will bring about the clumping and your test will be positive. Now, sometimes some false positive results may happen. It may occur due to any of this, that and IAD. Because in specimen containing potent cold reactive antibodies, agglutination may occur after heading the EHG. Because of the dirty glass wears, uh, may cause clumping of the cell, or due to the over centrifugation also. Sometimes uh, for positive, that test is basically resulted from a clotted sample. In that case, we go on repeating that maybe there is some false result. Or if you have collected the sample from infusion lines, in that case, uh, some complement proteins are also present in that case. Sometimes some indirect uh, IAT cells with a positive that will also give a positive result in indirect anti-globulin uh, procedure also. However, the uh, clinical significance of this Combs test and these anti-globulin testing it is immense because we particularly go for the qualitative direct anti-globulin testing that we clinically use in cases when there is clinical suspicion that an auto-antibody induced RBC is there. In that case, that testing basically involves IgG and complement proteins that we have just discussed. And in case of indirect, that is clinically useful when we go for you know, detection of circulating antibodies inside the uh, serum or plasma that have the potential to induce RBC hemolysis in certain conditions. In that case, we 
basically go on performing this iit test when uh, our, in the case of rbc phenotyping and in the cross match screening before the blood transfusion so if these tests are coming positive these tests are basically making a huge uh, you know uh, significance it is holding a huge importance uh, in the case of uh, diagnosis part because there are many uh, areas in which these uh, tests are being implemented for example autoimmune hemolytic anemia it is the most recognized cause of positive anticoagulant testing and it has been the topic of extensive study by the researchers throughout the world now next is lo immune mediated hemolytic transfusion reaction ahtr it basically happens when a post transfusion specimen develops a newly found auto antibody or lo antibody and the formation of this antibody is so quick that within 2 to 3 days it is being developing and these developed antibodies basically give positive that test that may not be associated with the hemolysis but these antibodies may develop they remain in the circulation next is abo blood grouping typing this is basically performed in the case of blood transfusion reaction as i told you in case of hematopoietic stem cell transplant this indirect anticoagulant test is used for rbc phenotyping to minimize the chances of you know uh, donor incompatibility or you know to protect or to save the blood uh, transfusion failure next is hemolytic disease of the fetus and the newborn we have also discussed this thing that this hdfn it occurs when maternal igg antibodies are formed against fetal rbcs notably the rh antigen or kl antigen the most common type of this is due to abo blood group compatibility which occurs in you know this uh, there has been a study in which it was found around 15 to 25% of pregnancy or tend to be less severe the incidence of this positive dat testing in abo hdfn is quite low as around 1% and of that group only approximately 23% of newborns they were found to be have significant jaundice problem hence that is a you know sometimes it proves to be a very poor positive for, uh, predictor of newborns that will require treatment for them however this home test is rapidly being carried out in blood banks because however uh, we use this test very rarely in order to diagnose a particular condition but we essentially use this technique in the laboratory such as blood banks because the blood banks are whole soul completely dependent upon uh, you know the indirect means test to determine whether there is likely to be an adverse reaction when the blood would be transfused transfused into a different donor so the importance and the significance of this test is immense whenever you are going for some blood transfusion reaction and in the case of pregnancy when uh, when the mother is rh positive but the fetus is rh negative or in the case of abortion of previous rh positive fetus in that case also the mother body develop auto antibodies against that so all of these things are basically detected or diagnosed by home test in the hospital setting. these are the few mcqs pertaining to this lecture that uh, what is home test why it is used why there is a need to use this test what are the different types uh, how these different types of tests are being performed what are their relevance on which kind of antibody they can detect which kind of uh, you know antibodies can be used to bridge the gap between the rbc so as so that a positive uh, uh, home test may arise or how you can go for the interpretation of a positive home test and the negative home test So all of these things are covered here. Thank you so much for listening.